Welcome back, everybody. This is our Algebra 2 Linear Functions Lesson 2 Average Rate of Change Home Review Part 2. Again, if you haven't had a chance to catch our, our uh, Part 1, please make sure you get a chance to watch it. No, it does talk about a little bit about uh, our idea of average rate of change. So we've talked about the idea it's for uh, basically a slope in this case. Here, for question number four, an object travels such that a distance d away from the starting point is shown as a function of time in t seconds in the graph below, or really to the right. So, what is the average rate of change of d over the interval 5, t, 5 is less than equal to t is less than equal to 7? Include proper units in your answer. Okay, so we're looking at our, um, our when t is 5, so when t is 5, let's take a look here. When t is 5, our distance is 20. And when t is 7, our distance is 64. So our average rate of change would be 64 minus 20 over 7 minus 5. So 64 minus 20 is 44, and of course 7 minus 5 is 2, giving us 22. Now, what is our what will be our average rate of change? We will say in this case our average rate of change. I'm kind of include this here, type this out in this case. Our average rate of change, called ARC, for this interval. Interval is 22 feet because it's this is a feet per second. Please remember in this case that we are talking about average rate of change. It's a rate. It's a rate, and so the rate uh, for the object in the interval will be 22 feet per second. That's how we solve this. Okay. So again, please make sure you have this sort of like little statement here and make sure it said make sure improve include proper units feet per second okay now for part b the average rate of change distance over time which you found in part a is known as an average speed of an object is the average speed of this object greater than on the interval from zero to t to five or is it greater than on the interval between 11 to 14. And of course, justify your answer. Okay, so let's find our speed in this case. So we'll begin with our distance from zero to five. Well, zero, starting at zero, so we would have zero comma zero, and our interval, but not in our coordinate at t equals five is five comma twenty. So for that first interval from zero to five, we would have. I'm just gonna move this on just a little bit. Okay, so have some space. So we do 20 minus 0 over 5 minus 0 is equal to 20 over 5, which is equals to 4 over 1, or in this case, 4 feet per second. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the interval between 11 seconds and 14 seconds. So between 11 seconds and 14 seconds, we have the coordinates of... 11 comma 64 and 14 comma 79. Okay, we'll move this down a little bit here so we can take a look. And so now we'll find the uh, the average rate of change or the average speed. So we're gonna do 79 minus 64 over 14 minus 11. Okay, so we would get 79 minus 64 is 15 and 14 minus 11 is 3, so 15 divided by 3 is 5, so the average rate of change, average speed between time 11 and 14 would be 5 feet per second. And so, is the average speed greater uh, along 0 to, 5, 0 to 5, or is, uh, from time 0 to 5, or time 11 to 14? We would say, in this case, the average speed is greater over the interval and so because of, I'm just going to copy this thing down here this interval here just copy this here copy all right paste well, we know from 11 to 14 time interval in 14 
with the speed of with a speed speed of five feet per second and yeah what happens is that our speed of five per second is faster than the speed of five for four feet per second so that kind of makes sense now if we want to take a full look at the whole page here get look at the whole thing all right Okay, so that's question number four. And you see in this case, the coordinates, really important uh, to read the coordinates all. Now, one might say, well, couldn't I look at the shape of the graph? Well, you know, the tough thing about the graph is that it's not, maybe not drawn to scale. So it's one way to look at it. But the steepness of the, of, the, of the graph might be able to tell you, in this case, the speed as well. Like, the steeper it is, might be a higher rate of change. Notice in this case, the steepness between times uh, time five and seven was 22 feet per second very steep compared to between times 11 to 14 and times zero to five okay all right so let's go to our last question question number five what makes the average rate of change of linear function different from that of any other function what is the special name we give the average rate of change of linear function okay so in the case of linear function one of the things about average rate of change what well, is tied together in what we name the average rate of change. So we said before, early on in the uh, in the lesson, lesson, lesson uh, part one, in the lesson, we said the average rate of change, average, sorry, my typing skills are terrible. Average rate of change for a linear function is also known as the slope. Oops. The this all caps slope of the of the line. Okay, and in this case, for for a linear function, the slope average rate of change is a constant between any two points on the function okay and so this is different this is what's different from any other function okay this may not be may not necessarily be true necessarily true for any other function Okay, so that's the reason why the average rate of change for linear function is different for other functions because it's a constant. This may not be true for other functions. We saw that in um, a previous problem. I think it was a question number three. We saw um, f of x was x squared, where we saw that we took between any two data points, we saw that the average rate of change was different between uh, two values of x's. So uh, not a constant, not a constant and also. But it's good to see in this case that you can tell if the average rate of change is the same no matter what between any two points, a good, uh, good possibility is gonna be a linear function though. If it's a linear function, then we definitely know it's going to have a constant slope or a constant average rate of change. Okay, fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much. Uh, this is the end of, a, of our homework review for lesson two. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this helpful, please leave a like and comments about if you're unsure about some of the things we talked about here or some of the answers. If you differ, like, oh, I think Mr. Dong made an error, which is possible. I've made errors before and uh, wouldn't, it wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be the first time, but I would love to be able to hear your thoughts about this. Okay, so please leave comments below. Also, ladies and gentlemen, um, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. We'd love to be able to have you guys you know, know when new videos are added to the channel. Also, if you if you're not sure about what's going on with the pandemic and stuff like that, if you know we have, you know, right now um, I'm teaching remotely. Okay, so I'm doing all remote. Um, and you know, I'm gonna say in this case that you know, up to you, what you know, what your parents feel and all. But you know, I'm gonna find that the uh, our classroom situations may not be so convenient or nice, uh, especially since all the windows be wide open. All right, um, no matter what the temperature is outside. <laughs> so you might you, it's not too late to to choose to go full remote, ladies and gentlemen. At least for the semester. I mean, we'll see how things work out next semester, though. Okay. Anyway, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Take care and be safe.